The first step in any good flight is proper planning, and this goes for instrument departures as well. Let's start out on the ground in College Park, Maryland. The weather is definitely IFR, with low ceilings and drizzle and mist that are bringing visibility down too. If we can't see the trees, towers, and other obstructions that may be around us on departure, how do we know we can stay clear of them? The first place to start is to look for any departure procedures. In ForeFlight, we can go into the airport page and look at procedures. On the Departures tab, we see only one item, Takeoff Minimums, so we tap that. This takes us to a page in the Terminal Procedures Publication, or TPP, that corresponds to the takeoff minimums, departure procedures, and diverse vector areas for College Park Airport. Runway 15 shows a weather minimum of 400 foot ceilings and 3 miles of visibility. As a Part 91 flight, we don't legally need to adhere to the minimums, but since they're designed to allow us to see and avoid terrain in the immediate departure area, any incident might put us in violation of 9113, careless and reckless operation. So it's still a very good idea to follow the minimums. It also mentions a minimum climb of 270 feet per nautical mile until reaching 700 feet. For runway 33, the weather minimums are standard. For an aircraft with one or two engines, that means one statute mile. There is no standard minimum ceiling. It also shows a minimum climb of 456 feet per nautical mile to 400 MSL. These, of course, don't apply to Part 91, but as we said, are a good idea to adhere to for safety. So step one on any departure is making sure we meet the weather minimums and our aircraft can meet the climb requirements. It's also a good idea to have a look at the instrument approaches for the airport to see if the weather is better than the minimums for those, in case we experience an issue and need to come back to land. Both runways have specific climb requirements mentioned. These are considered non-standard climb gradients. What is standard? A standard departure involves three things. First, that we clear the departure end of the runway at least 35 feet above it. Second, that we maintain a climb of at least 200 feet per nautical mile and third, that we maintain runway heading until reaching 400 feet above the departure end of the runway, before starting any turns. The FAA will allow such conditions for a departure as long as obstacles don't penetrate the climb zone around the airport. A line with a slope of 40 to 1 from the airport is drawn called the obstacle clearance surface. If nothing crosses that line, a standard 200 feet per nautical mile climb gradient will give adequate obstruction clearance. If there is in fact terrain or an obstruction that encroaches that line, like the windmill here, the climb requirements will change, the weather minimums will increase, and the airport may use an Obstacle Departure Procedure, or ODP. College Park has an ODP for Runway 33. It involves holding runway heading to 700 before proceeding on course. This is a change from the standard 400 AGL that must be held before a turn. It's not much of a change, but then again, College Park isn't a particularly hilly part of the country. Let's have a look at a much more involved ODP at Tri-Cities Airport in Tennessee. There are mountains rising to the northwest just beyond the field, encroaching into that 40 to 1 line from the field, but a valley lies to the northeast. Again, we'll go into foreflight for this airport and find an obstacle departure procedure, the Tri-Cities 3. This one is depicted graphically, while the one at College Park was just textual in the TPP. We can see from the procedure that aircraft are being routed to the northeast of the field towards the Glade Spring VOR to get around terrain on these sides. Departing runway 5, we climb to 4,200 feet initially, then fly the 217 radial inbound to Glade Spring. Off runway 9, we climb to 5,900 feet, then fly the 200 radial inbound to the VOR. It's not common to find an ODP assigned in your IFR route clearance, especially departing non-towered airports. It's a good practice then to let ATC know as soon as you can that you plan to fly the departure procedure rather than proceeding directly on your cleared route. ATC can't be responsible for our terrain clearance this low in these cases, so it's important to take the initiative. It's important on an ODP to look at the takeoff minimums because the procedure designers are making some assumptions about your flight in order to ensure safety. For runway 5, we need to maintain at least a 250 foot per nautical mile climb gradient. This is a higher rate than that standard 200 feet. For runway 9, the climb gradient is 215 feet per nautical mile. Of course, if our aircraft is capable of a better climb performance than this minimum, that's fine too. We can use the rate of climb chart in the terminal procedure publication to translate these climb gradients into feet per minute. For runway 5, if we're doing 90 knots ground speed on climb out and we need to make 250 feet per nautical mile, we need to climb at a minimum 380 feet per minute. This should all be briefed prior to departure. 
If our aircraft can't do at least this kind of performance, we'll need a plan B. What might that plan B look like? You may have seen in the takeoff minimum some mention about climbing in visual conditions, which for runway 5 it says we're allowed to do with a ceiling of 1100 feet and visibility of 3 statute miles. This allows aircraft that can't beat the required climb gradient to be able to visually navigate around obstructions as they climb on the procedure at the standard 200 feet per nautical mile. At the bottom of the plate, we see another option called VCOA. This is the visual climb over airport. If we look at the route description, we get a bit of an idea what this looks like. It involves a climb in visual conditions over the airport up to 2,500 feet, then climbing to 3,500 on the radial. We need to maintain visual conditions through 2,500 feet, so even though there are no weather minimums listed in the VCOA, maintaining visual conditions means the ceiling must allow for at least a climb up to 2,500 feet. It looks like just a series of circles around the field until we're at altitude, then intersecting the 217 radial towards the station. So that's the rundown of instrument departures where obstacles are a concern. It should go without saying that any departure into low IMC conditions carries some additional risks. Flight Insight's Black Friday sale is going on now. Save 20% on all courses using the code TURKEY20 on checkout. Click the link here in the video to get started.